these swings of Windy Hill Foundry. Tonight I'm going to be pouring a match plate for a pattern that Chris Anderson had made. On one of his earlier videos, he made this little depth stop. And uh, he sent it to me, and I finally got around to making a match plate. And I molded five of these to go in one mold because I was trying to do one per mold just to keep him going, which was really not efficient. Uh, I need to be able to put at least five in one mold. To... I lost the footage that... And I lost the footage of me making the mold because my battery died and I was out of memory on the phone, so... I'm going to show you the mold before I start. I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to show you how I'm going to form a match plate with this mold. It's pretty interesting. This is the mold that I made. And uh, it's made out of Petrobon. We're going to be pouring aluminum, so I want the best possible finish I can get. I'm going to gently Petrobon stinks, by the way. All right. Now, basically what's going to happen is the metal, the aluminum, will come through the sprue, come out here. It'll go straight into this riser, and then it'll flow to each one of these parts. As you can see, there's five. Setting this together and pouring it would only create these individual pieces, the riser and the sprue. I'm going to elevate it, five of them in a banjo pattern. So this frame is a half inch thick. So it's going to elevate the coat from the drag one half of an inch when I set this on there. Now, I don't want to just apply all this weight to that frame without putting some additional spacers around here to help distribute the weight. If I don't, it's liable to crush through the sand around here. So these are the same thickness, pretty close to it, as the band itself. And I'm going to put three on each end. And we'll put one on each side. Now, what's going to happen is the aluminum is going to come through the sprue, come down, fill this inside the band, stay contained in the band. I'm going to come back and I'm going to pack some additional uh, Petrobond around the edges all the way around to help seal that, uh, in, just in case I spring a leak. But I'm ready to reassemble it and when we pull it out, I should have a plate with both sides of the pattern in there. And it'll already have the riser formed along with the sprue entrance. So let's get this together.
Alright. So now all I gotta do is pack uh, around the edges just to make sure we don't have any leak out. Okay, I'm fixing to pack Petrobon all around the perimeter of this, all the way around. And once I get it packed into the sides to that frame, then I'm going to add additional weight to the cope. I don't want to do that right now. I'm pushing my luck if I do that. But once I get a good solid surface all the way around, it'll be safe. But I don't want to chance wrecking my mold at this point. You never want to chance wrecking your mold at any point. Usually I do this with green sand and I'm kind of sloppy with it. But I don't have that much Petrobon. So I have to go sparingly. I have to be careful with it. And if you if you wad it up first, pack it like this, and then just shove it in, you don't drop so much all over the place. But I'm just uh I'm gonna work all the way around doing this. All right, so we got her weighted. Here's our sprue. These are vents, not really risers. I want to make sure there's no gases whatsoever in there, but it will still pull on those a little bit. It said piece. Now it's in pieces. This is A356 alloy aluminum. I don't use pop cans, extruded aluminum, or any of that mess. I, I stick with this alloy for just about everything. The other stuff will melt, and it'll shape but it's not durable. It's kind of useless for what I need it for.
So the band came off of uh, Good to the next one, man. All right, so you can start to make out the detail a little bit. Well, this is the plate. It turned out pretty good. This is the riser. This is the sprue. And I've got to grind these down a little more, but I don't want them with the surface. I want those above it. Uh, it won't hurt for these to leave a little indent in the sand. <laughs> But if you remove these, if you take it below the surface, then you have uh, pressure points in the sand which are going to push against the drag. So I don't want to leave it below the surface. I had two of these patterns break on me when I was making the mold. This one. You see the little crack here? And the one right beside it. If they're not distorted, I may be able to repair this. You can see it really good right here. And you can see the crack right there. But anyway, I'm not, I don't know, it, I'm not as happy with the finish as it should be, but I mean, it's not much better than my regular green sand would have done. But anyway, these and the sprue, the main thing I need to do is take and just grind a little, uh, draft angle to the side to make sure this thing will pull straight in and out of the flask smoothly but anyway that's it hope you enjoyed it and uh, a couple videos from now i'll probably be ramming this up and seeing how it does in the green sand for an iron part so stay tuned